Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Best Engines, the show where I talk about award-winning engines. In this episode we're going to be talking about Volvo's 2.0-liter inline 4-cylinder, which is not only supercharged, it's also turbocharged. Now this T6 engine has a bit of a history winning Ward's Auto 10 Best Engine Awards. In 2011, the T6 won as a straight six-cylinder engine. In 2015, the T5 won, which is a turbocharged four-cylinder two-liter. In 2016, the T6 won, which adds on to that two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine a supercharger. And then in 2017, the twin-charged two-liter Volvo S60 Polestar won. The vehicle we are looking at here is the 2018 Volvo S90 T6 all-wheel drive inscription. Its 2.0-liter twin-charged engine produces 316 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 295 pound-feet of torque from 2,200 RPM all the way to 5,400 RPM. Now popping the hood reveals a pretty bland understated engine bay that doesn't reveal the potency that this engine has. The engine is mounted transversely, slightly ahead of the center line of the front wheels, and it is tilted slightly back. The battery is not up in the main engine compartment, but rather stored in the back of the car to the side of the trunk. Now as far as the airflow for this engine, it's a bit complicated looking at the engine bay and things are pretty well hidden, so we're going to look at the whiteboard here so we can get a better understanding of this. And so we've got a representation of what this looks like kind of sprawled out here, where here we have our engine, we've got the supercharger right here, we've got the turbocharger uh, sending air through an intercooler, uh, that engine's going to be sending that power eventually through the transmission to the driven wheels, and here we have our intake. So this is the basic setup of our engine, and there's really three scenarios we need to talk about in order to talk about how this airflow is working. So in low throttle scenarios, you know, scenarios where maybe you're just cruising on the highway when you're not asking for a whole lot of power, obviously you don't need that supercharger working, and so it has a clutch which can and decouple so you're no longer spinning the supercharger. So your airflow when you're just kind of cruising along not asking for a whole lot of power it's going to come in your intake. This bypass valve is going to be open so it's not going to flow through the supercharger. Instead it'll flow through this bypass valve into the turbocharger through the intercooler and then into the engine. And so that's going to be more efficient you know you're not requiring the supercharger to be used to create that additional power. But let's say now you floor it when you're in that uh, low throttle, low RPM scenario. So you're less than 3,500 RPM and you floor it. Well, in this scenario, this bypass valve is going to close. So once you step on the gas there, that bypass valve is going to close. This supercharger clutch is going to engage so that this supercharger starts spinning. And so instead of your airflow throwing this path, it's going to flow directly through the supercharger and then pass around that bypass valve here before it is then fed into the turbocharger through the intercooler and then into the engine. So this is going to provide you that response that drivers want, you know, in those low RPM scenarios where you may not have a, enough exhaust pressure to spool up that turbo, uh, but you can get that supercharger enacted very quickly and start getting boost from that supercharger very quickly. So you get great quick response and a lot of torque in those lower RPM. So this supercharger will run up to 3,500 RPM before this clutch is disengaged and it can engage if it's not, you know, let's say you're at a low throttle and then you floor it, it can engage as fast as eight one hundredths of a second and it will spin up to about 23,000 RPM. Uh, so I was reading a Road & Track article on this supercharger and they were saying that Eaton was claiming that this was their fastest spinning supercharger. And to give you a quick little visual of, you know, what is 0.08 seconds? Well, this video is being filmed in 30 frames per second. Um, so, you know, if you were to take two frames, uh, that's about 0.07 seconds. And so I'm just gonna take this marker right here and then I'm gonna show you how far it drops in uh, just two frames or just slightly uh, quicker than how fast this supercharger can spool up. So I'm just gonna let it go and then show you the frames. Uh, so, you know, about 0.07 seconds here. So a little bit faster than this supercharger actually reacts, uh, but that's giving you an idea of how quickly it can start to then spool up the supercharger and give you that immediate boost. Now, what happens once you've reached 3,500 RPM? Well, at this point, if you're still fully on the throttle and you've reached 3,500 RPM, that supercharger uh, clutch disengages. And so now this bypass valve is going to open. You're no longer gonna be sending airflow through the supercharger instead you now have sufficient exhaust gases which have built up and they're fully spooling up this turbocharger so it's a smooth transition and boost there's not a dip and boost that torque curve remains totally flat from 2200 rpm all the way to 5400 rpm and so you have that airflow come through pass through this bypass valve right here 
into your turbocharger, through the intercooler, and into the engine. So you have this nice smooth transition where you maintain peak torque, and so at really any moment, you know, within the engine RPM, you can get immediate torque um, and get the response that you're looking for without waiting for that turbo to spool up because you have the supercharger uh, to take its place in those low RPM scenarios. Now, Volvo doesn't just stop here with this engine. So it's supercharged, it's turbocharged, and you can also get it as a plug-in option with their T8 engine. And so what they do is they add in a motor right here uh, between the transmission and the engine. So this is what they call a crank integrated starter generator. And so this is gonna have an additional 47 horsepower and 111 pound-feet of torque. And then they also add an additional motor to the rear of the vehicle with 87 horsepower, 177 pound-feet of torque. So this gives the total output peak for this system at 400 horsepower, 472 pound-feet of torque with the T8 engine option, the twin engine option, and in a vehicle, the XC90, which is weighing about 5,100 pounds, uh, they're claiming a zero to 60 time in 5.3 seconds. Uh, so wildly quick for a super heavy vehicle uh, using all the technology that's out there. Turbocharger, electric motors, superchargers, let's throw it all in there. Let's get rid of that 0 0.0 second uh, delay in response and have an electric motor that gives you that immediate torque, that immediate response. Uh, so a very cool solution um, in that T8 engine. Lots of advantages of this with the response time, with the efficiency of using that small engine, still having super high power output, so getting you know the speed that you want, getting the efficiency that you want. Um, of course, you know a bit complicated. Uh, you know the cost could be associated with that. One of the things they have done from a cost perspective is that they used to have quite a bit uh, different engine variants, about eight different engine variants, and they took these architectures down to pretty much just two, so a gasoline and a diesel variant. Um, so simple simplifying the architecture so that they can make these engines more affordable so it's not you know quite as when you look at it okay this is quite complicated it's a plug-in hybrid it's supercharged it's turbocharged it's got all these features um, but yet you know because they simplified their product range with these engines they're able to keep the cost uh, relatively you know in the the more affordable range or at the same price point that their previous engines were at. And that's not to say that these vehicles are cheap. They are certainly luxury cars and they are priced accordingly, but it is pretty cool what they've been able to do from a cost perspective by eliminating all of the different engine variants out there and then simplifying that into you know several cooler, uh, unique, efficient, powerful options. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.